If you have been paying attention to the world of blockchain, you already know about the massive price increase of Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies. You may have even been tempted to join a crypto startup yourself. And what better startup to join than Consensus? A mere glance at their website will impress anyone not familiar with the blockchain space. All the keywords are there, decentralized finance, NFTs, DAOs, the metaverse. These guys are doing it all. One of the hottest startups in blockchain recently raised over $200 million, which puts their valuation at $3.2 billion. This is a hot startup with over 500 employees. And this startup has a pretty low average on Glassdoor, 3.6 stars, which led me to wonder just how bad are things? Here's what consensus employees had to say on Glassdoor.com. Toxic culture. Pros. Remote working. No more pros. Cons. Leadership. Almost cartoonish level of incompetence. Chief operating officer is a joke. Chief human resources officer literally hates people. Huge group of opportunistic floaters with no real value or accountability but grandiose sense of self-importance. Toxic culture of backstabbing, sexism, and disrespect for employees. Advice to management. Change leadership. This is beyond repair. Structure. Drop compromised holocratic ideology and get decent corporate structure. Racist, sexist, corrupt. Stay the hell away. Pros. Remote first. Fair weather colleagues who won't stick up for you because their jobs will go with you. Cons, echoing the most recent reviews. Furloughs women and people of color first. White men are perfect angels in the eyes of a racist, sexist, narcissistic CXO. If you follow the company, you know exactly who I'm talking about. Encourages culture of bullying and harassment with no consequences for harassers. No job security. You're fired and furloughed with little notice at the whim of an asshole CXO. Salary increases for women maybe after 24 months if you're not fired first. Dare you to count women who have lasted more than two years. Joe needs to stop hiring former investment bank associates who bring their toxic culture with them. Women earn 50% less than their male counterparts. Pros, flexibility. Nobody won't notice or care if you don't do anything for six months. Cons, I was immediately put on gardening leave when I complained about the culture of bullying, harassment, and unequal pay between men and women with the same roles and seniority. I was surprised about how fast the process was considering they took three months to fire the head of a very important area after he made racist and homophobic remarks towards me at a company event which was being live streamed. There was video and audio footage HR refused to see. After that, most of the women in the marketing team left. In the Paris office, only two women are left. Most of the female developers left for the same reason. This is a company for and by white males. Besides that, we were told we would be given bonuses and shares and that never happened. There's also a huge disparity between US and European salaries. Europe is seen as cheap labor. You can only ascend if you are a white male in the New York office. Advice to management. People and talents should be called people and patriarchy. Stop the HR department to hide harassment and bullying cases from high-profile stakeholders towards young female graduates. Stop saying you are building the future when you are just copying the worst stereotypes in the world and intensifying them. Stop hiring unexperienced Ivy League graduates to fill leadership roles. Playground for white men. Pros, flexibility, remote first, travel, you can literally make your own job up and then either do it or not. You can watch Netflix all day and make good money. Little oversight over how funds are spent by rank and file, which many take as implicit permission to make up reasons to travel abroad or buy expensive equipment. Pay is well above average for entry to mid-level employees. Cons, racist, sexist, toxic work environment. CEO surrounds himself with psycho fans who do and say whatever it takes to stay in his good graces. Meanwhile, those same people enrich themselves without regard for the business or the individuals who are contributing. They've hired white men at six-figure salaries without roles or job titles, and weeks later laid off dozens of women and people of color who were contributing to the day-to-day -day functioning of the business. There are people without actual roles who make salaries and stay through layoffs. They just make up projects for themselves and convince key leadership they're working hard by presenting PowerPoint decks. Not an ounce of professionalism, respect, leadership, structure, or loyalty to be found here unless you are a pedigreed white man. Pay is inconsistent and depends a lot on the person who hired you. Obvious discrepancies in pay that correlate with personal identity. Actual benefits, <coughs> insurance, <coughs> are abysmal. 
Finally, for a company whose ethos and tech is all about privacy and security, they do nothing to protect employee information. For years, all employee info, salaries, names, social security numbers were kept in Google Sheets. Likely that they fixed that, but in my opinion, it's a reflection of where they put resources. Lord of the Flies plus software company equals disaster. Pros, remote work culture allows for some personal freedom. There are some nice people at Consensus who are trying to make it work. Unfortunately, they are at lower levels of the company where they have minimal impact. Cons, this is an attempt by a group of inexperienced freshers to self-govern themselves, just like the novel Lord of the Flies. The employees form into tribes to try and protect themselves and survive. Some groups try to do real work while others remain fairly idle, but bully others and spend the days going to meetings and sending useless Slack messages. For a startup, the number of meetings and reports making is crazy. However, because the group is trying to self-govern, they need all the meetings to try and build consensus <laughs> among the staff to get anything done. Nothing gets done unless a group agrees to do it. Without any structure or performance management, there is constant backstabbing and going behind people to advance your own or your tribe's agenda. Management lets this all go on, never intervening and never offering any guidance. Complaints are ignored. The result is unhappy employees, which leads to constant turnover. The environment is particularly bad for women employees. There is not one woman on the executive staff, and that speaks volumes about who they are. The executives are all men. Many women have filed complaints before leaving the company. My advice is to stay away from this employer. The technology is not cutting edge, and it's not worth being in the toxic work culture. Toxic. Remote first. Seems like creative, friendly, unconventional place at first. Cons, it does not take long to realize that this place is run by self-serving, narcissistic, entitled men. They create environments so toxic, full of manipulation, gaslighting, and aggression that most people leave this place with trauma, sadness, and self-doubt, and they have to process it for months, bruised, depressed, shocked, and feeling unworthy, just like domestic violence victims. There is no system or structure that would protect employees from overuse of power. Regularly displayed by leadership, HR is virtually non-existent. Advice to management. You keep rejecting all the feedback, fighting aggressively against people who question the ethics of your enterprise. But I think some of you know on a deeper level how harmful organization you've created. I hope some of you still have a minimum level of human decency to stop. I have to say that of the tech companies we've looked at, this must be one of the worst. If you have experience at this or any of the other big blockchain startups, let us know in the comment section. If you have a price prediction for Ethereum, let us know as well. And as always, thank you for watching and subscribe for more.